Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Team Building Podcast, where we learn how to build a dominant real estate team in any market. And we have a phenomenal guest here with us today who has done exactly that. Amanda Howard is here, and we're going to share how she is essentially racing to a 1,000 deals a year. That is the goal for this year. We're going to talk about what she's done, how many agents that she has, what she's doing to boost their productivity and bring the right people in, get the right people in the right seats on the bus, and all the fun stuff that goes into building a dominant local real estate team in a market area, especially uh, a southern or a midwestern market area where you might not think um, where, where it doesn't actually take a whole lot to dominate necessarily because it's not a huge market area, but there's a massive opportunity in smaller markets. And so we're going to talk about that and all the cool things that are going on in her local market that are driving some of the underlying changes that she's taking advantage of, as well as a massive rebranding project. So we've got a bunch of stuff to get into and limited time to cover. So first of all, Andy Cuny, what is up today? Not much, man. It's Wednesday, so we just got done hammering out a team training. That was awesome. We love it. We had really good attendance today. We had about 20 agents in attendance, so uh, it was a really, really good one. Yeah, and what? by the way, what is Omaha's Elite up to in terms of agent count? Are we over, is uh, it 35, something right like that? Right now, about 22 full-time agents, and then we have approximately 14 part-time or sub-agents. Gotcha, and we'll, and, and we'll get into the structure of Amanda's team too, but, but somewhere in the same ballpark in terms of agent count and deal numbers and things like that. So, uh, And then Amanda Howard, officially, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, we're super pumped to have you. So we've been excited uh, ever since we were able to get you on uh, on the schedule because there's a ton of stuff that we can talk about and even things that I didn't know that were going on. Uh, so just kind of catch people up. Give us the numbers kind of from from last year and where you're sitting at because uh, you're you're you have a really big goal for this year, but it's actually not that far off. Uh, so you guys are, are have some plans in place to hit that. So give us an idea of where you were starting this year from. Sure. Last year, 2017, we served 860 families which was 100 and, I wrote it down just so I wouldn't forget, 154 million in volume. Mm -hmm. And what our goal is this year is 1,000, as you had mentioned. We did not want to grow our agent count. We wanted to stay roughly the same for our team. And so last year we were at 29 agents. This year we're about that same. Uh, we just kind of trimmed the fat, if you will. So we trimmed some agents out that were just not as productive, brought some new ones in. And they just have, have caught up to speed very quickly, obviously, because it, we're seeing it in the numbers. Yeah. So, so far, then, oh, this first quarter, we're at about 450 sales that have closed in the first two quarters. Uh, we are we are right on track with where we want to be to hit a thousand. Very cool. And just to give the listeners an idea of what what the strengths of your team on what what would you say are the maybe the couple two or three main pillars of how you guys generate leads and attract clients. We have an expired plan that I've been running since uh, the very beginning. When I was by myself, single agent, new to the area and didn't know anyone, I was literally going door to door talking to people who expired. And so over the years, that's just organically evolved to the point where I was so busy, I started growing my team just by one person at a time to start helping me take over the leads that I could not carry anymore. And so our expired plan is still a big, big part of our business. Now it seems like the, the 800 number that I think most agents are using in a marketplace where they can put signs in the yard, those are working. We call them the IVR signs. Those are working phenomenally uh, just to gain buyer clients from. And then for more sellers, it's doing digital marketing, social media marketing, and television or radio marketing. So anything that we can do that's larger and out there, not so much mailers any longer. Really? Okay. And when you say social media marketing, things like that, is that to, does it actually attract and generate more seller leads or is it more of the fulfillment of how you prove to the sellers that you're doing a great job and help closing more listings? Earlier in the year, it was that first part. Uh, we were just showing the sellers that we could do a good job for them. We were getting out their, their listing globally. But now we have seen some with some recent, it seems like we constantly have to tweak it. I mean, with Facebook, yeah. as we saw today, and just not being able to get it right, we're constantly tweaking it to see what's going to work. And this last week with us just pushing out some pricing um, advertisements on social media, specifically Facebook, that's really drawn some extra attention. So we received 90 leads just over the weekend. And so that was, all of us are like, was this some kind of weird quirk? Something is it new to the market, or is it something that that we did that caught their attention? So we're actually evaluating that. But yeah. it some, seems like we're constantly doing that. We constantly have to change things up, push something new out there, give it a rest, let things die down again, and then test, do an A B test. So we, yeah. right now we're on a B test of what we were doing, and this one worked. 
That's interesting. Okay, very cool. Uh, and just out of curiosity, so the leads that come in, do you do you have do they just go and get routed to agents round robin style? Do you have an internal kind of a sales team that scrubs them first? We have them routed strictly to our website or our back end of our website. So once they they give the you know sticky site, so they give their information, and then our agents who are on duty, we switch it out morning and evening because it's just too many for one person to handle in one day. So we mm -hmm. alternate. And they are the ones who get that lead. If they don't respond to that lead in a timely manner, then the next agent can get it or it's open for everyone. Gotcha. Very cool. And then, Andy, you want to briefly cover how Omaha's Elite handles that same problem? Yeah, absolutely. And I love how you describe it as a problem. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> problem to have. That's right. Exactly. It's a problem of abundance. <laughs> that's right. Right. If you're going to have a problem, that's the one to have. Um, we do it very similar. All the leads come in through our website and then uh, they are. Uh, given to one single agent per day. So like Amanda does, they have half days, right? So morning and evening. We do it where we have one full day and then we try, each agent only gets one to two lead days per month. Um, so that so no agent would get more than two lead days in a month. And we always try and space them out by at least two weeks. So that they have two weeks to go through, get them through their qualify, get them to hot nurture watch, do whatever needs to be done so that they're all cleaned up again by the time their next lead day comes. And our lead Great. days uh, are from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. And then, Amanda, what's what's the end result for the agent? How many leads on average do they get from the team per month? That does vary. However, what I there's two, two answers to this. I would never want to see a minimum of 25. My goal was always 25 leads a month per agent because that is the most, that's the numbers that we've run and seen that they're the most successful. They convert them to the best. However, we have that same challenge of we're sending them between 100 to 150 leads a month, and that's wow. why we've had to add ISAs in so that they can go behind to just call and because they're really taking the cream off the top to be able to, to take care yeah. of people who are wanting to work first. Yep. And then we have other people who can manage and incubate them. Very cool. Okay, so we talked a little bit about, you know, I think one of the one of the key questions that the audience will have is, okay, so you you do about, you know, just under 900 deals last year, you know, you want to get to 1000. So you're essentially talking about growing the business 10 to 15%, which doesn't sound like a lot. But at that the level that you're at in the market that you're in, like, and, and by the way, how big what's the population of Huntsville? Our metro market is 350,000. Yeah, so I mean, it's somewhere between like Andy, somewhere between Council Bluffs and Omaha. So a lot, uh, like a lot less. The Omaha metro area is about a million. So we're talking about a third of of the size. Um, so you're talking about growing the business by about 15% in a smaller market. Um, and so so instead of going out like most people would go out and say, okay, great, we've got 30 agents, let's get 50, right? So what was what was the difference? Why didn't you go that direction? And what what are some of the things that you're doing to help agents increase their productivity so that you don't have to just grow the team by 15 or 20 people. Now we've opened an independent side as of just, we haven't actually officially launched it yet. People know about it. So we're already getting some agents, especially teams reaching mm -hmm. out to us. They know that we're about to launch it. But five weeks ago, we partnered with Sotheby's International. So we're now Amanda Howard Sotheby's International Realty. And in doing that, it helps me bring in some additional marketing and technology backing that I wanted to see happen. We are an international market, even though we're smaller just because of the industry that we have here locally. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to allow me to continue to grow my agents, which is what I love to do. My passion is to coach so I can grow and, and coach my agents to be happy and live the lives they want to th accomplish successfully on the team. And then I, the agents who are coming in on the independent side, I can help them as they want to grow either independently. Some of them want to remain single agents. Some of them have teams and want help and support. I know when I left and went on my own, I did that because I was at a brokerage that did not support teams. Yeah. So we have some pretty amazing agents in our community. They're really, really great. They need support as well, and they know that that's what we're about. We're a service industry, and we offer some service to our agents as well as our clients. Mm -hmm. So they're excited that we're putting together a package, Claire and I, who's my sales manager, specifically around independent agents so we can help them grow in their business and help their teams grow independently. So we will have a separate side, and that's what – I'm excited to to grow with. Yeah. And my team is excited as well because though they love our team and we love the, the culture that we have, it works really well where we're at. We, we stayed right about 29, 30 agents. It sounds like a lot, but 
it's not that much. It's not that many yeah. agents, and we work well so cohesively between mm -hmm. our buyers team and our listing partners that they kind of get nervous of it. What if we grow to 50 or 60? Are we going to lose some of our culture? I don't know the answers to that. However, I'm really happy. We're really happy. If we hit 1,000 this year, which I think we will, we're hitting our goals. So why not be able to pursue the passions that I already have and they're happy that I'm doing because it keeps me more motivated to keep helping them. If I can just help other people under our roof, we call it our family. We want to just help our whole work family grow. Okay. So many oh, questions. Uh, before before I get to my seventeen thousand <laughs> questions, Andy, what what have you? What's what's your initial thoughts? I love it. I love how you can just tell the way that Amanda talks about the agents on her team. You know what I mean? That she actually cares. And I love how when you ask her about her real estate business, she talks about the value that she's providing and how she's adding individual value to each one of her agents. Like that's the first thing that comes out of her mouth. You know what I mean? Because that is so important. It's about you know it's it's a lot of times what Jeff talks about. Yeah, you can remove yourself from production but then you've got to take that time and put it into your agents, right? Yeah. And a lot of people, when they want it, they get to that point where they remove themselves for production and then they think they're just on vacation, right? And you can see what Amanda's done is she's turned around and spent all of her time and efforts now on her agents and then also growing the independent side. So I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear the next 20 minutes of this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's, uh, there, there's a couple of different directions that we can take, but I want to dive into the personal development side first, because outside of when you're talking about getting to a thousand deals, you don't consider the indie agents that you're bringing on under the Sotheby's brand as even a part of that. You want to grow the team where the team that already exists is doing a thousand. Uh, and you mentioned that you love coaching, you love personal development. How does that translate into your daily schedule? How do you build that in so that it actually gets done? I have to time block, um, and, and there's days like yesterday where I had blocked specific time for working on that, that program that we're putting together for the independent agents, and it got eaten away because there was fires that, that came up and I needed to jump in and help. That's going to happen, but at least you can you know it's not going to happen every single day. So you just have to have an ideal weekly schedule where you time block yourself of, first, I'm going to... For me, what I do is I start my day with, this is what it takes for me to plan my day and make sure I've got everything confirmed, I have everything I need, skim my emails, get rid of the crap or easy answers, and then I go in with agent huddles. So then we meet with some of our agents, we have a 15 day, just or 15 minute good start to our day, and then I'll jump to a couple of accountability meetings that I need with some of my direct reports. And then I'll jump into an hour of handling all messages, responding to everybody so I can clean out my email, and then I'll go into something of training, whether it's a video, sometimes it's self-help, sometimes it's a program that I'm working on, um, planning for our next team advance. There's so many things that you need yeah. to do to com com keep growing, really. Yeah. So I always have my time blocked, though, for each one of those things so that I can handle it. Then I'll have lunch. I like to eat every single day. And then after that is usually my additional planning time where I'll just say an, an additional project or maybe it's mm -hmm. I need to walk the office and I haven't had time to doing this conversion over with our rebranding for the last five weeks I've not been able to see my personal agents my team that much so now I've been blocking that time where I can go back to sitting in on some of their meetings or going to lunch with them or seeing what I can do with uh, just in the last two days I've heard that they would love some additional scripts and dialogue help over some pain point items that they were having. So I'm gonna jump back into those. So there's always something, but I make sure I add that time in there for my team cultivation to find out what do they need, make sure they feel loved on. Some of them need additional accountability because they forgot, maybe they fell off the, the wagon a little bit while I wasn't watching for the last five weeks. There's always something. There's something yeah. for, everybody's different. <laughs> Is the uh, what's what roughly what's the goal in terms of how often you'd like to really sit down with each of your agents directly, just one on one? Do you try to hit every couple of weeks, every every month? What's the goal? One on one would be every other week. Um, mm -hmm. My personal heart is I wish it was every week, but I know that I can't do all the other things to grow the business, and I do have a family with two teenage daughters, which goodness, that's a lot. <laughs> they, yeah. they take it. I thought as they became teenagers, they, they need you less. And for mine, it's been the opposite. They actually need me for, and yeah. I have to be an added security agent where I'm constantly checking in on them on everything. So <laughs> that's been a little extra time. Um, well, maybe Sotheby's has some technology, tracking device saying. technology you can install or something. Yes, yeah, I, I started going, oh gosh, 
even my mom, I was explaining something. She heard an alert go off on, on my phone, and she goes, what's that? Is another agent contacting you? And I said, oh, no, that was Ashley. She just checked in at her boyfriend's house. She goes, how do you know that? And I went, security alerts are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I have trackers on everything. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> so All I right. don't know where I went off on that that station. Anyway, there's so yeah. many things to do in a day. The yeah. best way for me to do that is just to time block. Yeah, I very good. I hand out one-on-ones with my agent. Mm -hmm. I really do ideally like to do that once a week if I could, but it's just I've not found it to work for me, so I I do really yeah. attempt to do it every other week. Yeah. I just love the fact that uh, Amanda brought up time blocking. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's, unless it's, it's not important unless it makes your calendar, right? And so it's yeah. got to make the calendar. It's got to be done. And I love that you can – they're hearing directly from the mouth of someone who's going to do a thousand units this year, because I run into agents all the time who do 50 units and they're, and they're like, I'm too busy to time block. No, you know what I mean? I'm just like, you were, so, you're just holding yourself back. And I love the fact that you brought that up. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the, uh, the rebranding a little bit and, and the, the strategy be behind kind of what you're doing in the next step, right? So it's uh, what was really interesting to me is there there's things that we don't know from the outside about your market, and you briefly touched on them, but you felt like it was best to partner with Sotheby's. I'm I'm curious though, what are what are some of the specific things that especially the tech or the marketing support that you felt like you couldn't give as an indie that really drove the decision for Sotheby's? The the global marketing that that Sotheby's offers and the the heritage behind the name. It yeah. really brings a lot of value where it's already recognized. So we have people coming in from Virginia and D.C. area and California quite often, starting to get a little bit more from, from Texas as well. But but those mm -hmm. were our two major markets where we – or feeder markets where people are coming in from. And they don't know Amanda Howard. They People locally know Amanda Howard Real Estate because I was so involved with the community, and I have been for quite a long time. But if they've never been here before – they would they needed to find us online so we really were staying on top of our technology with making sure we were marketing as broad and big as possible with our our social media and online marketing with Sotheby's it just gives us an added name recognition now not only are we still continuing with what we already have been doing with marketing we get to add their marketing on top of it and their marketing I'm already seeing a benefit from that even though it's only been five weeks we see a massive increase in our people that are relocating in, already knowing about us and contacting us directly, not even through a relocation company, which as all of us as agents know, is very appreciated. Because those relocation companies, they're hitting us 35 to 45% now. Yeah. And so when they're coming through somebody who is already referring us, we don't have to have that referral fee. Some of them coming directly to the site, so we have nothing. Or if it's coming from another agent, an affiliate in California, we're happy to pay that 25% over that relocation company who's not doing anything for us. Gotcha. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, so one of the big questions I think a lot of the listeners have, especially if they're own, if they work for or they own an indie brokerage now, a lot of a lot of them will have teams within their brokerage, right? And so that's always an interesting balancing act. And I know you're at the start of that journey, but what do you feel like are the things that you'll provide the indie agents that you've seen like provide a lot of value to your team? but you can still offer to your indie agents without having to bring them on to the, like, the core team. Sure. And that's what's interesting as we grow this is I'm getting to, I, as I said, I've had a few people, a handful of agents already reach out to me before we've made this public to go start recruiting, and they've told me what they want. So what I thought that they wanted and what they actually want are a little bit different. Hmm. So what I first what I wanted to offer was to – prepare the marketing listing presentation, um, marketing pieces that were going to Im be important for their business and that they wouldn't have to worry about. I wanted them to have support with closing department and listing departments to do quality control checks and be able to get things done more economically for them so that they wouldn't have to put out that added expense or some of the things we were just going to do for them to ensure it gets done so they could stay productive face-to-face -face with clients. We know it only works to make them money if they're out selling and face-to-face -face with clients. We could do some of this for them. Um, offering a, a cheaper plan and making it all make sense with just a one, not nickel and diming the agents, just a one monthly fee that covers everything, covers desks, covers computers, covers E&O, covers cards, 
everything is covered. I just wanted it to be simple. And the simpler we can make it, the more appreciative the agents are. Well, as I shared that with a few of them, they completely agreed. They really were intrigued by all of that. But it was interesting where they, they already recognized my team. They know me. They know my team. So they said, well, what about uh, some coaching on time management? That was the biggest one. That was the first one asked every single time with five people that contacted me. And I said, well, do you want coaching? And they said, where we're at now, we don't get coaching. They say they offer coaching, but it's really not coaching. So would you spend some time with me to help me with my time management? If you're in our family, under our roof here at our brokerage, absolutely. That's what I'm here for is to help you be more productive and if that's something you want. And they said, okay, great. And then they kind of like shyly asked, what about added accountability? Hmm. Uh, what kind of accountability do you want? And they said, well, we know with your team, they do check-ins with you. They just make sure that they're on track. You're kind of listening to their, their scripts. You track their conversion. Would you be tracking any of that? <laughs> of course, I. it's almost talking to teenagers again. <laughs> do you want me to check on that? <laughs> and okay. they said, well, yeah, I don't want you to post it publicly, you know, because we do public boards on our mm. for our team. We right. don't want everybody to know about it, but between you and I, absolutely, I want to improve. Mm. Well, absolutely, we will do that. So now we have added in there that we will do coaching. It's not required. It's not going to be at a set time like our, our team members. They have one-on-ones every other week. We have scripts and dialogues four days a week. We have sales meetings once a week. They have all these things that yeah. are very structured, and it works great for us. We're going to offer opportunities. If they would like it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a success team. So we have a transitional team. If somebody says, I really need to be on a success team for six months, we're going to do that where maybe they're transition. They're having a hard time figuring out how to, to advertise. Maybe they're having a hard time figuring out how to network, um, to recruit, to hire. We're going to have a success team where people can sign up for a six-month period of time. But then also for anybody who is on the team, they're going to have opportunities to have access not just to our sales manager who is who they were expecting, but mm-hmm. to me for one on one coaching whenever they would like to do that. They just have to schedule it with me. And of course I'm gonna be here to make sure that they're successful. So that's been really what's intriguing them was having that access to additional coaching. That's interesting. I love it. And that's what I said, I thought mm-hmm. you didn't like me. And they're like, you're a competitor, but if you're if we're on the same roof, then yeah, I want to learn from you. I always have respected you. And I thought, well, that's good to know. That made me feel a little bit better. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you go into a new market, you know, there's a difference between what we think they're going to value and what they actually value. I'm surprised, though. The coaching, I'm I'm semi-surprised by the coaching on time management. Um, Although when the rubber meets the road, we'll see how much they love it when the rubber meets the road and you have to call them out on why they're not honoring their time blocks. That'll be a fun conversation. Um, But... (laughs) But the the other one, the, yeah, the accountability part, that's really interesting. Um, I always, in fact, I I think I've yelled at you about this, Andy, like to stop using the word accountability in the pitch to agents because we know they need accountability. They don't think they need accountability. So I'm, I'm surprised that was actually something that you heard like them use that word because I don't hear agents use that unless unless you've got the personality type that likes to get their butt kicked to make their calls. And that's a very high D, you know. The only, as I said, the, the five people I spoke to, were mega producers in our marketplace. They that were high driven people who yep. want to succeed. They're they're successful. They're mm-hmm. happy on the outward, you know, looking at them, they're they've got it going on. Mm-hmm. But just probably just like any of us who are doing well, for me I have my own mentors. I have a coach that I pay for, as well as I have two local business coaches that are outside of my industry that are just my local mentors that I just want to understand business better from their perspective, or I want to run operations from their perspective, questions by them. So I think it's that same thing. We all know if we're a driven person or individual who wants to succeed in life, we need mentors we can count on. And also trust comes into play. So you need somebody that you can trust and rely on. And I think that's what they were finding and what they were telling me is maybe they just hadn't found that person that they could trust who's already been there and done that and that they could ask these questions that would actually have some real life knowledge on answers. That's interesting. Andy, what what do you see? You see people when you when you're recruiting people for Omaha's elite team, what what's the feedback that you get from them on what they want, what they come in expecting out of the team? 
Well, it's been really hard to shape, I guess, what um, what our persona is, right? Because here in Omaha, obviously, we're, we're number one far and away when it comes to units and all the size, all those types of things. When people come to us, they think we are literally just an internet team. That's all we do. Everybody's a telemarketer, and all we do are internet leads. And we try and let them know, and we show them the numbers that 30% of our business last year came from internet leads, right? And 60, whatever, what, 67 percent, no, 70 percent came from sphere prospecting. You know what I mean? We try and show them this, and so it's uh, it's usually when we sit down and meet with somebody, it's tough to kind of we have to break a lot of those uh, perceptions of what gotcha. we are and who's successful. And I like now, since we you know, track everything under the sun, I can sit there and show them, we have agents on our team who do, you know, Sphere is their main source of business. Person sitting next to them will do 70% of their business from prospecting outbound. Person next to them will do 30 internet leads this year. You know what I mean? And so it's, yeah. it's based off of what are you good at, right? We're gonna give you yeah. the opportunity to try out every single avenue, right? Mm -hmm. And then find out what are you good at? And then we're gonna help you time block and figure out where you should be spending your time. And yeah. I know that you, uh, you, you, you would get on me about using that word accountability. I'm telling you, when I sit and meet with a new agent and I, and I use that word accountability, I do it pur purposefully and I do it very loud and slow, right? <laughs> I want to see their face when I say accountability. If, yeah, they yeah. Cringe, if they cringe, I know they're probably not gonna be somebody who's on my team. Cause I tell you what, when I, cause yeah. we, we talk to a lot of high D and team leaders across the country. When I say accountability, they get excited. When I talk mm -hmm. to a lot of people who probably yeah. aren't going to perform and not the people that I want to run with, I say accountability and they wince, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it helps me figure out, hey, who's somebody I'm going to spend six months with over the next six months, invest time in, and they're going to succeed or not. Because I'm telling you, I want to do all that heavy lifting up front. I don't want to yeah. be nice yeah. early on and then be like, oh, you're a time suck, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because especially if you're going to, if you're going <laughs> to, if you're going to add as much value as someone like Amanda's doing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? and really honestly, openly care about the people that she's giving up her valuable time for, you gotta make sure that they're gonna do their part. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and that's the difference between recruiting someone to join your team versus recruiting someone to join and partner with you up under, under brokerage. Um, okay, so I've got one last question for you, Amanda, before we do, and then we'll jump off. Uh, how, what's the best way for people to, to learn about your team, connect with you, and especially for referrals, what's the best way to connect with you guys? They can, for our website, they can go to amandahoward.com, and we do have a careers uh, page for them. But they could also just email me. You can email me directly at amanda at amandahoward.com. Perfect. All right, and that applies for, for so any agents that's listening to this, uh, if you're in the Huntsville, Alabama area, make sure to do that. If guys, if you're listening from outside the area, especially now that she's affiliated with Sotheby's, obviously that's going to ring true with your clients. So if you've got somebody that's moving into that area, which apparently there's all kinds of people who are from California, Texas, D.C. So if you're listening from that area, keep an eye out for that. So final question for you, Amanda, is you, you briefly mentioned just the coaching and mentors that are involved in your life. You're obviously super passionate about personal development. Uh, what's your what is your approach to to staying sharp yourself and what are some of the resources that you turn to to keep on developing yourself so that you have more to pour into your people? I am constantly looking for the next best place for me to get coaching that is relevant to what I need because my goals constantly change as well. Yeah. So I do have a business coach, Bob Corcoran, who has been coaching me for, I think, 10 years now. Um, so it, he's been great and been there for me through each development phase. And then, as I said, I do have a couple local mentors that I call on based off of, again, those needs. And I'm in some Madison County leadership group where it's with public officials as well as business owners that help, we help each other. They'll call me for mentorship as well as I call them. And that's been awesome. Um, and then there's a couple people in the industry that are just, if they're in that Forbes top 50 list, then uh, Wall Street Journal top 50 list, a lot of us talk and a lot of us are friends. So there's a few of them that over the years we've just gotten to know, we call on and to run things by or send a quick text to say, hey, I'm dealing with this situation. What do you think? Or, hey, I'm going to start this recruiting program. What's been working for you? So it's been great to reach out to other people who are very successful and been there. And we know that it's mutual. We can ask each other for advice. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. And I think if I remember right, you were involved in rate as of, you know, I, this has been a few years ago since I, but, but I know you like, connect with a ton of people because that's a phenomenal, like even aside from what the actual group does in terms of like media buys for TV and radio, the people in the rate group, holy good Lord, that is a high yes. level group of people. That's 
that's exactly a, a, where I get to meet them at all these top people. Yeah, yeah I get so to that makes sense. Person. That's great. Cool. All right, so let's finish up with this. Andy, what's the best way for people to connect with you and Elite Real Estate Systems? EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Go ahead and check out the website. Um, you can learn about, uh, you can uh, download the latest podcasts, right, like this one here. You can yep. um, sign up for one of our workshops. You can take a look at uh, some of our training and then also learn some more about our coaching. That's right. Cool. Uh, and as far as the podcast, make sure to subscribe on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, YouTube. You can get the audio or video versions, depending on what your preference is. We always appreciate a rating and a review. And specifically, guys, if you go to iTunes, the goal is to get over 100 reviews by the end of the year. Make sure to call out and publicly thank the guests. So if you've been listening to this episode and you got a ton of value out of what Amanda had to say, in your review, make sure to publicly thank her for her time uh, in the review. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much. We appreciate everyone's time. We'll see everyone on the next episode of the Team Building Podcast.